Hello, welcome. Uh, this is a uh, video aimed at people specifically who say, oh, I can't paint, uh, therefore I'm not going to bother. Um, go and spend lots of money on buying pre-painted armies and things. Well, to be honest, um, I think everybody can paint. Um, it's not a difficult thing to do. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, as long as you can hold a brush and paint in between the lines of a miniature, you should be able to get something knocked out. Um, and I urge everybody to give it a go, even if you think you're not very good. Uh, because it's not the... At the end of the day, we're painting figures for war games, and we're not after prizes or anything. And the, the point is that if you paint your army, you enjoy it more, and you get more out of it, more out of the hobby. And... Um, you know, in those times between games, and believe you me, it's been a long time since my last game, um, it gives you enjoyment and pleasure and, uh, you know, gets you out of the way of the wife or whatever. Um, so, what I'm intending to do is to paint through some uh, Triari, who are the Roman veterans from the Republican period. Um, just as a bit of a note, they were the people that, they sat, bit, they were, positioned behind uh, the legion as it were, they were the last in the legion and as if, if the legion needed to um, pull back and regroup the triari would basically form an impenetrable wall of shields uh, and would fight to the death to sort of stop and give the rest of the the other you know the other legionaries the principes and the and the velites and stuff time to sort of have a bit of a rest, as it were, and as you progressed through um, the Legion, or your service, as it were, uh, you ended up as a Triari, um, and, and you, were, you were quite wealthy by then, um, you know, you'd, you'd gathered a lot of plunder, and you could afford the best weapons, and the best armour, and the best shield, and this, that, and the other, so they're quite splendid troops. But anyway, what I'm going to do is uh, paint up some from uh, a Gemma or a Gemma or whatever they're called, miniatures, uh, the plastic miniatures, they're quite easy to paint, they're very well detailed, um, very well defined, and that's something else, that, you know, I mean, you know, the better you define your miniature, the better you can block in the colours. So, um, anyway, without further ado, I'll show you how easy it is to paint up um, a miniature. It doesn't have to be Romans, it can be anything, do you know what I mean? But this principle, the principle applies. Anyway, so uh, let's get on with it. So this is what um, we're going to be painting through. Now, like I said, I'm not going to do a paint through as in like speed it up video and show you bits and pieces, but essentially it's a methodology uh, for those of you that say that you can't paint or not say that you can't, think you can't. Um, basically anybody can paint. Um, so anyway, we're doing these, they're very simple um, figures to do. Um, I'm just using these because these are the ones that I've got at hand at the moment. Um, the same methodology applies, no matter what it is, whether it's a sci-fi space marine or a wood elf or whatever, you know what I mean? It's the same sort of thing, it makes no difference to what it is, it's just the uh, way in which you approach the project. So like I say, these are fairly basic. Um, before I paint, paint anything, um, I tend to do a little bit of research, so um, we're going to have a look at uh, the sort of research sort of stuff that I do. So, we searched for Triari, and this is what I've come back with, lots of uh, pictures. Uh, I'm looking at the large scale ones, so I can see it. In the past, obviously, we used to have to use books, which is a very expensive way of doing it, but you know, the internet's free, as it were. Um, to an extent, and it gives us lots and lots of inspiration and colours to use how different people have approached the same subjects. I mean, uh, these, these are what we're painting, I believe, them. Um, so you can take a look and have a look at the uh, look at how they how they've uh, conquered the subject. Sometimes it takes a while to come back. There you go. Depends where they are, it's a photo bucket, and Google doesn't like photo bucket. But, you know, so that's all I do really, is I just have a good look round, um, have a look at uh, 
how other people approach the same subject. Sometimes you can find original sources, um, you know, uh, you know, like proper pictures and things. I filtered this down, but um, there you go. All right, so back on with the plot. Right, so now we have some idea about what colours we're going to be using. Uh, the first thing I'll do, once I've got them you know, assembled and cleaned up, um, they've been washed. Uh, I know people sometimes don't bother to wash them, but I always give them a quick uh, rinse through. Um, I, depending, I mean, uh, on plastics, I'll tend to use uh, rubbing alcohol uh, on, a, on, a, on a bit of a... Uh, cotton bud or something or just a quick dip in some warm soapy water. Uh, the other thing I've done as well worth pointing out is with fully plastic miniatures I don't use super glue. Um, I use uh, proper um, polystyrene cement. Uh, this is particularly Revel. It's quite good because it's got like um, an applicator on it so as you can just squirt out a little bit and top tip the little things that you get wrapped around bread um, the wire in them is the right size for poking down this hole if it gets blocked up so I always have one of them handy um, so if it gets gunked up you can ungunk it so it's just a top tip um, so they've been washed um, I glue them together with this sort of glue simply because um, it's a it's unlike super glue you can fiddle about with it so you can stick it together so it gets in the right spot and then you just sort of can move it around gently press it in and uh, it will set the other thing is of course that it welds the plastic together so it's quite it's quite a strong uh, joint so um, unlike super glue which can be quite brittle um, so anyway, that, that's the way I use that. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll prime it. Now you can spray primer if you want, but I brush primer. This is actually uh, an airbrush primer uh, from Vallejo, but I put it on with the brush. And the reason I put it on with the brush is because as I'm brushing on the primer, I tend to get to know the figure. So I can spot where all the awkward bits are going to uh, appear and um, obviously deal with painting, making sure that I paint the uh, the awkward bits first before I do everything else, if you know what I mean, so you don't get yourself tied up into knots. And I also think it gives a, it's a good way of covering the miniature because you can get into every nook and cranny, which sometimes you can't with a spray primer. But if you spray primer, it's each to your own, I suppose. It's a bit more time consuming priming by brush, but um, yeah, I have to leave them for. I, I, I'll prime and then leave for 24 hours. I don't paint on the same day that I prime. So I generally, I generally do is prime before an evening session. Uh, that's the first thing I get done, and then obviously by the next evening they're ready to start painting. So I'll get ahead and prime them now. Right here we are. Um, the pl primed black now. Uh, obviously, I'd, all I've done is use the uh, surface primer from uh, Vallejo. Uh, I chose black in this case because we're doing a lot of metal. Um, it's going to be a lot of uh, dark colours on these. Um, so black's the better colour, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> for example, when I did these uh, velites, which are lighter in colour, there's not much uh, metal on them, as in like armour or whatever, I used... Um, a lighter primer. I use the uh, desert tan, and I just put a a wash over the, over the primer to do the next thing that I'm going to do, because um, the next thing I'm going to do though is uh, give them a quick dry brush of of uh, white. Now um, this is not for any other reason other than to sort of highlight where the different bits are. I'm not using it to highlight or anything to do with um, shading or anything. All it is, it just shows me where all the bits are quickly. So 
<coughs> you have to excuse me, I've got a bit of a throat. So although we primed him black, we give him a coat of uh, white at dry brush, and that sort of brings out the detail, so as you can see where everything is, and it just makes it a bit faster in the end to, to get them painted. So um, we'll get on with that, and then I will show you what they look like, or how you would paint them very quickly for dipping. Right, so here's our Triari after a, a little bit of flat base painting. Um, I may be wondering why his helmet and greave are brown. Well, that's the top tip of the day. They will be bronze, so you underpaint um, colours like bronze or gold or whatever with, um, with a brown colour. It makes the bronze come out better in the same way that you underpaint the armour with black. Um, so that's why I pause at this point just to sort of uh, sort of mention that. The other thing is of course we've got his red tunic, the um, typical Roman sort of look. It's the blood of the, uh, of the citizens as it were, the blood of Rome. So um, all this is at the moment is uh, Citadel, my fist on red. Now, that's a great red, but um, I'm going to lighten it up a bit because the end result will look better. So, I'm going to paint over some, uh, I can't find it at the moment, uh, probably blood red. There we go. Some coat of arms, blood red, or the uh, Wild Rider red, which is the top layer in the Citadel Red range, so um, I'll have a think about that, but basically I want to lighten it up a bit so as it looks, sort of um, stands out a bit more. Okay, so um, I'll get on with that and then we'll move on to the final stage of um, saying that uh, you can't paint is a bit of a fallacy. Right, so um, here they are. Uh, very basically painted. Everything on here is a flat colour uh, as opposed to uh, a blend or a shade or whatever. Um, the trick is to make sure that you get an even coat of the flat colour so that it's nice and strong um, and as bright as possible. That's why I've used the plate mail on the armour and the bright red. Um, like I say, it's just it's just a simple paint painting in the lock in between the lines essentially. Um, I just put them on these little bits of card at the moment for the next phase. That's just to uh, protect the blue tack really underneath. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, the only thing to do now is the shields. Now, um, what I've done with the shields is I painted them white. Oops. And then on the back, it's just brown. Um, and then varnish them because I'm going to be putting on some decals. Now, I'm not a fan of decals. I bought one specifically for um, these shields. And this is what they look like when they're on. The only problem is they're too big for these shields. And some of the shield bosses are the wrong shape. Um, so I had to go at... Uh, cutting out the design and putting them on but I don't know whether that will be any good because um, these are what they look like before you put them on and they've got like a colour sort of transparent colour as it were that goes over the white like I say I'm not a great fan of uh, decaling uh, for shields and stuff um, I think if I do them again I'm going to do uh, try and do some simple hand Paid ones, but anyway, I've got them finished. Now we can move on to the final stage. Here they are, then, with uh, the shields on now. Um, quite basic, as, as I've been saying, uh, very flat colours. Um, they look quite okay, like that. Uh, in some instances, I've seen people be happy with that and. Uh, just give them a quick protective varnish and uh, base them up. 
um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if that's what you want to do, if you, you know, if you prefer just flat colours, it's perfectly fine. Uh, you don't have to be uh, ultra realistic because at the end of the day, they are just playing pieces on a on a, on a game. So, but anyway, what I'm going to do now is give them some of this. Where are we? I think we can have this. What I'm going to do is this. Use the uh, quick shade dark tone on them, and I'll show you my technique for putting them in because I don't actually dip them. So I get asked about this all the time. So just for um, completeness, I'll actually go through everything that I do on uh, on your man here. All right. So I'll just get set up and uh, we'll crack on. Okay, as ever, this is going to be quite awkward, but um, we'll try and I'll try and just run through. Hopefully, you'll see enough just to uh, understand what I mean when I say dipping. So here's my chap. Uh, at the moment, he's just flat painted. Let's make sure he is securely stuck on. All right. So essentially, what I'm going to do is get a old brush, right? And this is the dark tone as we've already seen. I'll just start off. I'll just dip the spear in because I always forget to do the spears. And then, with this brush, just whap it on. I mean, really whap it on. Right, so you just sort of control what you're doing. Make sure we cover whole figure. Okay, and then do the front of the shield. Right now, as I say, it's going to be quite awkward because uh, the camera will take it off the front of the shield as best you can. I always do the shield first because that's the big flattest area. That's the area that will run most so I'll just try and get as much off. I'm using this cocktail stick here because I don't want it I don't like using that cocktail stick popsicle stick because when you use the rim to wipe your brush off uh, what will happen is it'll stop the uh, it'll cause an air gap to appear because of the dried on stuff and it'll go everywhere and it'll let air in and it'll dry out. Anyway so as you can see we've covered him over in stuff um, we don't need this big brush anymore. So we'll get rid of that. I'll just see, this is the problem when you try and mess about with stuff too much. Anyway, right, so there we go. You can see that. And then what I do is get a smaller brush and basically just go in and take out all of the drips and drabs try and smooth it out as fast as you can but not too you don't have to be too quick because it takes quite a while to, to become unworkable but you're just taking out all of the heavy blobs and just easing it in making it you know as even as you can that's about it really that's all you have to do Right, so I'll uh, get off and do the rest of them. I'll show you what they look like when uh, when they're dry and what we do next. It's been um, 24 hours since I uh, varnished these with the quick shade varnish. Um, as you can see, they're quite shiny, which is good because it means they're very well protected. And what I'm going to do now is uh, cover them in a couple of coats of matte varnish, which takes off the shine. Um, it doesn't make them too matte. It sort of makes them sort of like a bit, uh, have a little bit of a sheen. And you can always just touch up bits if you do want them to shine with a bit of more varnish. This is the matte varnish that I am going to be using. It's um, a Vallejo artist varnish I think it's called um, for acrylics so yeah it's good stuff 
I've had this for years. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go through the matte varnishing process. It's basically put some varnish in a pot and uh, paint it on and um, take off the excess and let them dry for 30 minutes and they're fine. Like I said, I'll probably put two coats on. That should bring out all of the um, shading from the quick shade. Another good one, if you don't, if you want to use a spray varnish, is um, what's it called Tester's Dull Coat, and I believe you can get that from Firestorm Games in Cardiff. Uh, it's about five pound. But um, like I say, I've got this and I use this. I I use brushes for everything. I don't use any sprays at all. But there you go. That's me. All right. Um, we'll have a look at them when. Uh, matte varnished and uh, I'll have based them up as well so uh, next time you should see these they should be all based and ready all right so here we are um, I think it turned out quite well I said I was going to base them but um, I decided not to because I'm going to get some uh, ones to put behind them and a command group and stuff so um, I've left them like this for now uh, they will be based on 4x4 bases um, for Hail Caesar, but that's by the by. Anyway, as you've seen, they look fairly well. Uh, they put them off for a tabletop miniature. They're not going to win a crystal brush or a golden demon, but at the end of the day, it's a quick way of painting troops, and as long as you can hold a paintbrush, you can paint within the lines, and... Uh, Yeah, we can produce quite a decent looking uh, army very quickly, very straightforward. No major massive techniques or anything like that. It's just all flat painted, thin on a quick. I mean, you could just use a you know a, a wash over the top if you didn't want to use the the dip the army paint and dip stuff. But um, the way I use it is on like a wash anyway. So um, yeah, there you go. That's about it really. I presume now we'll uh, go and have a look at my ugly mug as a wrap up. So there you are then. Um, as you can see it's fairly straightforward. Um, okay, they're not going to be uh, the best miniature, miniature paint job in the world. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've wasted many and many and many years trying to be uh, a painter uh, fit for the pages of White Dwarf or whatever popular miniatures magazine you actually read or look at or get top votes on uh, you know cool mini or not or whatever and I've never succeeded but what I can do is pay armies pretty quick and that's the point you know uh, these if you condensed all the time down into into the sessions I would say to do those eight uh, figures there would have taken me about an evening it's about an evening's work plus the drying time of the um, the varnishes and stuff, so you know it's fairly straightforward. You you can get a decent sized horse painted in a few weeks if you if you sat down and, and and put the hours in as it were. So that's it. I hope you've got something out of it. I hope you found it enjoyable. Uh, if you didn't, then I'm sorry. But <laughs> you know what I mean. It's not aimed at. It's not. It wasn't aimed at expert painters or long in the tooth painters. It was aimed at somebody that doesn't think they can paint, but they should be able to paint. Uh, it's fairly straightforward and it's not difficult to do. It's very enjoyable and at the end of the day you end up with a nicely painted army for a fraction of the cost of uh, having buy, bought pre-painted miniatures. Alright, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>